With that, I will move on to our next lightning speaker. She currently serves as the CIO for the County of Santa Clara. Previously was the CIO for the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency during the Obama administration. I love that we have to say it that way because everyone gets so excited about Obama. <laughs> she spent 10 years as a senior position at HP, and today she's going to talk to you about growing innovation from within. Please welcome Ann Duncan. Thank you, and thanks for making me 10 years younger there. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I set myself a timer in the hope that I cannot make us any further behind than we already are. Um, so we are going to talk about building a culture of innovation. So earlier speaker said you can't plan a, plan a culture change, and I'm going to tell you how you can plan a culture change, right? Because innovation is all about culture, right? And I was, invite, I was asked in two, my last two jobs to come in and change the structure, right? And no one thought about changing the culture. They just said, well, redesign the organization, and it will all get better, right? Well, it's not all going to get better just if you consolidate and redesign. Culture is what's important for innovation. Um, you can't work differently in the same environment, and you can't just change the physical structure and expect the environment to change. So in this very short time, I'm going to try and give you some idea of some of the things that I think matter in order to change a culture and to enable innovation. So first of all, bring new skills. We've heard a little bit about that already, right? So. You know, the, the half-life of, of a technologist skills is really short. You can say it's two years, you can say it's five years, it's really short, whatever it is. So if you have all the same people in your organization, they're not going to have all the skills you need. Doesn't mean you don't value those people. It means that if they're not if they haven't learned something new, they're not going to be of value to you in changing. And in fact, they're not going to learn something new in your organization that hasn't changed. So you need to bring in people. And whether that's things like uh, 18F and USDS bringing in fellowships from the private sector, uh, whether it's just hiring new people, whatever it is, you need to bring in new skills. And you need to look everywhere that you can think of to get those new skills. And so one of the interesting things, as you probably know, is the model of USDS and 18F. I was in the federal government. And in fact, I stole the director of 18F to come be my CTO. So I'm pretty familiar with both of those things. And we used to say that USDS fought fires, right? If you broke something, if you had a crisis, they'd come in and help fix your crisis. Uh, 18F came in and built a building for you. My goal at EPA was to build buildings myself, right? So I could bring someone from, from 18F in to help me, but my goal was for them to teach me. So those people I bring in with new skills, they're not supposed to sit in their silo with their new skills. Their job is to share those skills with other people who are already in the organization. And by the way, those people who are in the organization know things those people don't. So you may have new skills, but the people who are in the organization know how to get something done. Right? So between those two, you're going to teach each other, and you're going to be more successful in general with those new skills. So next thing is build skills inside your organization. We've created something, or we're creating something, to be perfectly transparent. It doesn't exist completely yet, called TSS University. It's called TSS University for two reasons. One is because my organization's new name is Technology Services and Solution, and the other is because our COO came up with the name. So when, your boss, when, when, you're, when one of your peers, who's the most powerful guy on the staff, says that's a name, you go, great, that's a great name, Miguel. Thank you. So the goal of TSS University is to do everything from sending you to a training class, getting you a certificate, or sending you to get a, a four-year degree, even a master's degree. And so, yes, in the, in, in the county, we plan to send people back to school and pay for them to get a degree. Now, I'm not going to send someone to Stanford. They can go to Stanford if they want to, but I'm going to pay what it costs for them to go to Santa Clara, to, to San Jose State, right? And if they want to go to Stanford, they can pay the difference. But the point is, we need to reskill the people we have, right? We have a lot of people who've been around a really long time, uh, who are great employees, but whose skills are, are, are a little uh, long in the tooth, right? So the second thing about changing that culture is to give the people the skills that they need to be more successful in your organization in the future, right? Though, you know, what, what people, there's a saying that says, you can train your people and be afraid they're going to leave, or you cannot train them and be afraid they're going to stay, right? So what I tell them is I want to give them all the skills they need to leave, and then I hope they'll stay. Right? That's my goal. I want to be a place where they'll stay once I've given them those skills. Okay? And then lead change from everywhere. Right? The biggest challenge is, you'll hear from anyone who's trying to adopt Agile and to be more innovative is middle management. Right? So executives get a great idea. They want to do something. And in fact, by the way, almost my entire executive team is brand new and from the outside. So that's strike one to begin with because it's those outsiders who brought those ideas in. And you know, you've got new employees, you've got young people uh, primarily, but some of your older employees as well, who are excited about these new things. 
right? Well, middle management, they don't want to change. They like things the way they are. In fact, agile, what happens with agile innovation? You give up your power as a manager. You have to give up your power to your team. They don't like that, right? They're old style, classic government managers. They don't like that. You've got to get everyone, including your middle managers, on board to lead or your change will fail and your innovation will fail. So there are plenty of ways to do that, but you have to figure those out, work through those, and get those people engaged. They have to be part of it. They can't be collateral damage. So I want to talk a little specifically, so that's about half my time. So I'll spend the second half of my time talking a little specifically about some of the things we've done. So we've taken uh, four organizations. It was three, but on, uh, in, in July 1, we're picking up the finance agencies, IT, because I never understood how in the public sector the thing that no one should be running outside IT is run outside IT, which, are, which is the finance system. I thought, why is someone else running those? So July 1, we'll pick up the finance systems along with HHS, social services, core IT. I now have about 90% of the IT staff in the county, which is over 1,000 employees, which is kind of crazy. We're going to work on that problem later. Um, but now we said, what's our mission? Well, our mission is to transform county services through collaboration, technology innovation, and operational excellence. Right now, operational excellence is fundamental. Right, it's the table stakes. It's what gets you in the door. No one lets you do anything unless you're operationally excellent, because you just look like idiots. Right, if you can't solve the basic problems, if you can't th keep things from breaking, why would I trust you to do anything else? But that is intentionally last on our list because we want people to think about us as innovators and as partners. Right, that those are the number one and number two things we're going to do. In fact. When I talk to my managers about our new structure, I tell them they have three jobs. Number one is to lead and develop people. Number two is to collaborate and communicate across the organization. And number three is to get the work done. Because if I do one and two, the work will do itself, essentially. The staff will do the work. So that is aligned with the, our first job is to collaborate, is to understand our business partners, not simply to make sure that the trains run on time. So, to do this, we had to create a set of values and principles. And I'm going to spend a few minutes going through them because they're illustrative of what we're trying to do. And my timer went to sleep. That's not really very helpful. All right, so, um, and, and they're different, right? So these are different than the values and, and principles we set up at EPA because we have a different group of people and we're trying to accomplish something different. So, you know, these are, these are good values and good principles, but you may not need the exact same set in every organization. But, you know, our, the county's culture is maybe not the best culture in the world. So we said, we don't care what the overall county culture is. We're going to have our own culture. Number one is you're going to treat each other with respect. Right? That's the number one thing. We're going to be respectful to each other. We're going to behave appropriately. We're not going to you know, say, because I'm a, a more senior person than you, I can treat you badly. Second one is integrity, right? That I can trust that you are going to behave with me honestly and fairly, and that you are going to do what you say and say what you do, right? The third one is accountability, right? And this is a huge, can be a huge problem in the public sector in general. You need to deliver the results you said you were going to achieve, right? That's what accountability is about. It's we said we're going to do something as an organization, as an individual, and we delivered those results. We're going to be transparent. People are going to understand within our organization, outside our organization, what we're doing, why we're doing it, how much money we spent. Compassion, right? We, we're creating a performance organization. We didn't put that as a value with the value is compassion, right? We want excellence, but the compassion is how we create excellence because we're going to be nice to each other. I'm, you know, if it's a manager, I need to coach you. I don't have to be a jerk about coaching you. I can be positive about the way I coach you. So, and then excellence, obviously. We need to achieve excellent results. We want to be a great organization. Even though that's cornerstone of our success, it's last on the list because we don't want to focus on it to the exclusion of everything else. And then finally, I talk about our principles that we set up in terms of being, and these are more in many ways, these are what get us to innovation in our culture, right? People are most valuable assets, and you know, if people are stealing, I certainly stole this from HP, right? Because I spent 20 years there. That was my comment about you made me 10 years younger. Um, was um, that, that if you don't care about people, you're done, right? And, and in the government, sometimes, even though we care deeply about people, we sometimes don't make it clear to people that we do, right? Our whole, our whole structure, particularly in California, is centered on taking care of people, but somehow they don't feel like we care about them. So that's number one. But bias towards action and change. So what happens in government? You learn that change happens when it happens. It's slow. It'll happen when it happens. I don't, you know, I don't care. Because it's, you know, no one is trying to make things happen. So it's incredibly important that we 
point out to people that we actually want to bias towards action. So you're going to move forward. What's the next thing I can do to move this project forward? What's the roadblock that's stopping it? How do I solve that problem? How do I escalate to solve that problem? We want people constantly thinking about that. The work is one IT. That's about the fact that we've brought four organizations together, and we're trying to make sure people understand we're one. But we also have about 200 IT employees outside of my organization. And the message is we call them federated. Um, they're part of our IT, too. And we want them to behave like they're part of IT, even though they're independent. Um, and don't, you know, don't tell them, I think, that they should behave like us, because you know, they, they think they're independent. Um, but we build partnerships to maximize value of technology. That can be with partners across the county, that can be with private sector companies, that can be with uh, state and local agencies. Uh, whoever it is, we're going to partner with people. We don't have to solve every problem ourselves. Um, and then most importantly, uh, in many ways in the government, is we each person gets to lead through risk taking. What that means, and I used to say this a lot at EPA, we don't want people to take stupid risks. We want them to take smart risks. We want them to talk to their managers to get their buy-in and to take a risk, right? That's about pilot projects. That's about solving problems in innovative ways. And if you tell people they're empowered to take risks and that you've got their back, they will. And I want them to take risks with $50,000, not with $5 million. Because I can explain $50,000 to anybody, but when you lose $5 million or you're six years behind on a $20 million project, that's a lot harder to explain. We don't want anything to get that way. We want to we want to learn. We want to take risks. We want to fail fast. And then finally, as I talked about at the beginning, we're a learning organization. We want our employees to grow and develop all the time. Uh, as unusual move for a lot of government agencies, in addition to the TSS University, we have uh, development plans in place. We're going to have development plans in place for every single employee. They're going to have a conversation with their manager, then to create a development plan that is a combination of what the employee wants and what the county needs, and they're going to be held accountable, them and their manager, to delivering on that development plan. So those are the things that we're doing to change the culture. Right? The important part of all this, and I'm probably over time by now, is to create an understanding of where your organization needs to go and what the changes are that are going to get through there. Because this set of things will get us where we're trying to go. It's not necessarily what's going to get your organization where you're trying to go. Although some of those things, like being willing to take a risk, learning, bias towards action, are important for every organization. And it's the places where the government is the most challenged. So I actually do believe you can create a culture change. I'm not saying it's easy. Right? But I think with a concerted effort, you can. And we are seeing that now as we move forward. And I encourage you all to embrace that, uh, that, that uh, journey with me. Thank you. <laughs>